um, but very easy to write songs about your own experiences. Singer, songwriter, actor and playwright, for 30 years Richard O'Brien has been one of the true cult figures of the world music scene. Well, I haven't really approached it with any kind of... Um, I'm not career-minded. There's, there's never been a game plan. Richard's home is south of the River Thames, a stone's throw from the Houses of Parliament in the riverside suburb of Vauxhall. Richard lives here in a townhouse on a closed estate. Twice married with three children, Amelia, Josh and Linus, he now lives by himself, but his children are never far from the centre of his life. Well, here I am in my little sitting room, my little lounge on the same level as my bedroom, so I can come and have a cup of cocoa and watch television and go to bed. It's fine. His house reflects his passion for collecting fine furniture, ecclesiastical and gothic pieces. I've always loved history, loved uh, antiquity. I've always loved beauty and elegance. Strange as it may seem, these gothic pieces are as much a part of the imagery which became the Rocky Horror Show as the music itself. It's that collector's magpie mentality that bought rock and roll and romance comics and, and all those bits of, of pop art, populist art together, you know, in a way, was, was collecting just the same as I collect my, now I collect my um, gothic revival, uh, Victoriana. If everything went down the tubes and I was never employed again as an actor or a singer or anything, I could make a very good living out of doing interior decoration. So, you know, don't write me off yet. Still deeply attached to London, Richard is about to make a journey back home, which will force him to reevaluate his whole life. Scott was imprisoned here before her execution. It is a land steeped in history and wild beauty. After living in a variety of European countries, Patrick Power was drawn back to Glasgow by his passion for this countryside. I grew up in Dannybrog, right at the foothills of the Ruahines, and I spent my lots of time in my youth in the Ruahines. Having lived in cities in Germany and so forth, I, when I came over here, I was really ready for some countryside. This is so like bits of New Zealand. I just felt at home immediately. strange because my profession is very much an urban one but um, London was I was more aware of the disadvantages of London than the advantages I'm much happier up in Glasgow where I'm looking out over country and fields and so forth and hills I don't think I can live anywhere I couldn't see hills 200 years ago this valley was home to more than 300 people brutally cleared off the land by English landlords Many Scottish pioneers started their journey to New Zealand from valleys like this. Normally, Patrick Power would be up here carrying a gun, helping the local farmer with his deer cull. Today, he's looking for the elusive golden eagle. Yeah, the, the eagles would usually be working along to this corner here and then back around the other side and back down, hunting for hares usually. Uh, but today, I think, given the fact that it's a gale blowing, I think those two th things we saw getting blown sort of east at 70 miles an hour might have been the eagles. Well, it's really, it's, it's just like central Otago. You don't really become at home somewhere else. You can have a home, have a home somewhere else and uh, you, you don't really, and you have, I've never ceased being a New Zealander. It's time again to make that long journey to the other side of the world, to a place that will always be home. Patrick and Aileen Power arrive back in New Zealand, not with holidays, but with work on their minds. They will be here for four months, and Patrick will sing three operas. The first is a double bill in Auckland, and rehearsals start in two weeks. Two hours later, another itinerant singer is at the same baggage carousel in Auckland. 
Richard O'Brien with 10-year-old Amelia and 15-year-old Josh have just arrived from London. Um, my other son's coming in tomorrow from Tokyo, and, uh, and the two of them might go up to Ruapehu or somewhere, Tongariro, and, and, and do a bit of skiing. And uh, I'm sure my sister will be wanting to get her hands on that little one there and spoil her. Their destination is Hamilton and Tauranga, the places Richard calls home. The O'Brien family emigrated from England to New Zealand in 1952. Richard was nine years old, the youngest of four children. A sickly child, the outdoor life of New Zealand was a revelation. Swimming, rugby and weightlifting became his new passions. Their first house was in Hamilton. Richard is returning for the first time in 46 years. We're at number 16 Kitchener Street in Claudelands. This was our first house here, 1952. The window over there with a the blind on it, that was my bedroom. It's so, um, the first house that we ever lived in with a tin roof. And when it, we first were in there and it rained for the first time under a tin roof, I was terrified. <laughs> I was just, it's just wonderful. I just, I, I, just to look across there is, uh, this is a time warp because I never thought I'd ever, ever go anywhere and find the past. And coming down the street and looking at these delightful, charming houses, I have actually found the past. That's a wonderful feeling. A year after arriving in New Zealand, the family moved to Tauranga, which is where they still live. It is here that Richard calls home. The whole thing, like had everybody down there. Although he has been away all his adult life, Time and distance have strengthened the bonds with his elder sister, Jilly, and brother, Robin. It is three years since they last met. You are, you'll never forget the night at the, at the Christmas Robin, Eve. an accomplished musician in his own right, was the closest of his siblings. He's never lost that teenage spark. The guy never changes, does he? No. I mean, once no. he shaved his hair off, well, he had, still had hair, you could see the changes taking place as the hair receded. And all that. But once he shaved the whole lot off, he, he, he's never changed. He's an eternal Peter Pan. Yes, he is. He's I'm a, he, pea green. <laughs> <laughs>